Um, random, okay. I did um, pole dancing for a few months for the first time in Korea and I really loved it. I did it like beginner's class and honestly one of the most fun like hobbies I've ever had. Mm -hmm. Were you able to like get that core worked out perfectly? Oh yeah, and stretching, everything. It was super fun. Let's see, random fact about me. Um, I was actually in a Korean major motion picture two years ago. It played last July. Uh, in Korean they called it Saja, but um, in, uh, in English they call it the Great Divine. Oh. And about from where I'm sitting at, and um, I guess to where that light is, I was about that close to the main actor, and I didn't know it. I said, wow, this dude is kind of short, but he has some good swagger to him. Uh -huh. But um, they called me up, they were like, say, hey, we need a black guy to come in, right, and just walk across. <laughs> and you can see me in the movie, mm -hmm. right? I'm just, I, I was like, I, I got a funky walk, mm -hmm. right? So I'm just kind of walk and do my whole pimp gangster walk in the movie. You can see my big old head, but you can't see my face. Okay. You can see my head. Cool. Ah, okay. Do you want to go first this time? Um, song that I can listen to all day long. So there is a hip hop duo that's out. They're called Little Brother. Okay. And um, first time I heard them was in 2005. The, the members at the time were Big Pooh, Fonte, and Ninth Wonder. But now it's just Big Pooh and Fonte. Okay. But um, the one, the first time I heard them, there was a song they did called We Got Now. Mm -hmm. And I heard this song, gosh, 15 years ago now. And to this day, I listen to it uh, at least once a month, just just to get me in the mood, because. It's a really good pump up song, mm. and it's nothing like you hear in other songs that's supposed to pump you up. They just tell a lot of truths in it, but the way the way the beat flows and then the way the lyrics go along with it makes you go, "Oh yeah, that's right. I got this. I got now. I'm gonna do this right now." Mm. So that's one song I can listen to. Good. Um, for me, it changes from time to time. Like I don't have one song that has stayed me with me for such a long time as with you. But these days, I can't stop listening to Doja Cat's Say So. <laughs> I don't know, it's, I, I don't know, it's famous from TikTok, I guess, but um, I just found it recently and has a good beat, fun lyrics. I really like Doja Cat, so that's hmm. the song. Did you uh, sing, did you uh, listen to the song that made her viral? That video? Is it the move? Yep. <laughs> oh, I watched, I, I watched the video once and I was like, if this had been the first thing that I saw from her, I would not probably check any of her work after that because it's so weird. But yeah. It's kind of crazy how something so stupid and crazy just blew her up yeah. at that. So that's, that's great. Think about myself. Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. Um, I want to have more patience. I'm one of the most patient people in the world, I guess. I get frustrated in Seoul all the time because people are walking super slowly, and whenever I have to wait for something, it's it's really it's just painful for me. So I I, I wish I would have more patience. Mm. For me, it will be knowing when to shut up. <laughs> I talk way too doggone much. Like sometimes I know a lot of things, mm -hmm. and I just wanted to say it out there. But mm -hmm. I talk way too much. And my mom always says to me, "Well, you should be a lawyer. You like to talk and argue a lot." And I've considered it, but I, I just got to realize, Sean, just shut up and just just not let it get out there. Um. In my country, it's pretty much 50-50. And when I came here and I went on some dates with Korean guys and they wanted to pay for everything, I felt, honestly, I felt uncomfortable. I was not used to that. And I felt like kind of burdensome that I'm gonna owe them something. But now I think I have adjusted to Korean dating culture a little bit more. And now I think that it's just, whatever is comfortable for the mm -hmm. couple and depends on like what stage of the relationship they are in 
So I guess, you know, here is the culture that the guys um, pay for at least a dinner. If you go on a dinner date, they pay for the dinner, and then the girl, if you go have coffee after that, then the girl pays for the coffee. And I think that's it's an okay ratio at that point. Um, with me, the way, the way I see it is, if I'm going out with a lady, mm -hmm. we're going we're going Dutch. That's 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 happening. Yeah. Because it's like I don't pay for my friends. Oh. You know, if, if we're dating, if we've known each other for a good while, and we're dating, yeah, sure, sure, sure. You know, I'll be the man and take care of it. But especially if I'm if I'm if I'm first meeting her, yeah. or even on a second date or whatever, I'm not paying for mm -hmm. I'm not paying for her. All right. She she's got she's got money. She's fine, we can do that, but I've never mind, all the mistakes that I made growing up, and uh, I realized, oh yeah, sure, let me pay for you, uh, let me pay for you and everything, let me do all the things, and bam, she go off and go dating somebody else, I'm just like, uh-uh, nope, okay, no, um, we're going to split this 50-50, yeah. if, if you can't pay for it, then um, you have to go to the back, baby, and go wash the dishes and go pay and go uh, put in some hours for the time, <laughs> but, because I'm not paying for it, I'm not paying for it. But but seriously though, um, I um, I make that I make that clear before we go off and say, hey, look, we're gonna do we're gonna do fifty fifty on this, all right? Mm -hmm. and if she's cool, cool. If she's not, oh well. Right.